So things you should consider in a holiday home. I reckon flexibility is big. It needs to be a space you can all have fun in. It needs to be durable, long lasting, and most of all, easy care. I mean, this is your holiday home. You don't want to be spending all your time cleaning. The backdrop is what really sets the scene, and by simply changing the colour of the walls, it can make all the difference. For the trims, vivid white will be perfect. Cabins of this vintage were often made from pretty simple materials like asbestos. Now these cover strips are often a giveaway. A quick way to check is to get your hand in between each panel. And just push and you'll find that if it flexes, it's more than likely masonite. If it doesn't flex, it's more than likely asbestos. So if you suspect it's asbestos, do the checks before you drill in the wall. That way everyone can be safe. For a holiday house, you really do want to pick a colour that is easy to live with and timeless, unlike this blue which has really dated the place. Some of the best fun you can have in a holiday spot like this is hunting for treasures. It's one of my favourite things to do. You can use them for display by putting them on a shelf around the room. Now in keeping with a simple holiday vibe, I'm just going for a basic shelf. This one's L-shaped, I've got a backing board, and for the shelf itself, a slightly wider piece of pine. I've pre-drilled it, countersunk it, all I need to do is just glue and attach it. Just to reinforce the joint, as well as the screws along the back edge, I'll just pop one in at the front here. I'm by the sea, so I'm going for that weathered appearance. So I don't need to be too fussy, because when this is dry, I'll sand it back in places, and that way I'll show some of the timber grain as well. To add a little bit of fun and texture to the shelf, and also bring the outside in, I'm looking for sticks. I thought instead of a trim along the front, I'd use something like this. I love the colours of the bark. So straight sticks like this are perfect. I think that that is going to come off a treat. It's a funny take on a timber yard. My plan is to use the sticks to dress the front of the shelf. And for that little gap in the other bit of timber, I'm going to use some brackets which will not only look decorative, but also add some support. So to do that, I need to cut 45 degree angles. A mitre box is the best tool, along with a handsaw. I'm just going to add a couple of screws, and so they can't be seen, I'll attach them from the top and the back. Edge, go for the straighter sticks that you've got and just pre-drill, no need for any glue, and just pop in some screws and away you go. It's pretty rustic but it's cute. I found some fellow holiday makers to give you a hand and they are going to take the weight while I do the drilling. Okay, so we want to line it up, top of the window frame. Okay. I mean business, look at this. Perfect. Look at that. First little treasure. I like it. It's a little bit of the outside in. I don't know about you, but when I'm on holidays, I often like to take a little craft project just to keep my hands busy if I do happen to get bored. Now here in the holiday house, I'm not working on the kitchen today, but I do want to hide it away. So these little rope hangings, which you can pick up from the hardware, are ideal. Just want to add my own twist. And my twist is to tie a few knots in the rope, a little macrame-esque, so I thought square knots would do the trick. By taking four of the strands, you just hook them over, work out the height that you want, and then just reverse it on the other side. Our cabin, like many holiday houses, is a little on the small side, so we need to make the most of every available square inch of space. I've got a couple of great space-saving ideas that you could use at home as well, starting with a luggage rack. So 
I've got some timber. You can buy all of this off the shelf. This is 42 mil square, so I've just docked it down, so I've got two equal lengths. And just some long lengths of dowel. I'm choosing to do a lime wash finish. So simple to do. Just get some plain white paint. Just pop it on, and then before it has time to dry, just wipe it back very gently with a damp cloth. I've clamped my two blocks of timber down, just checking that they are square. Now I can pop in my first dowel, which I've pre-drilled, that goes on the end. And to make sure that they're spaced evenly apart, I've just cut a chock of timber, and this goes in between each. And that is all there is to it. One very handy rack, ideal for plenty of suitcases. Now, another cute little idea is to make yourself a towel rack, something that you can place neatly near the door. Now, this is an old bit of recycled timber. It's got such great texture, perfect for a beach house. Now, I found a couple of these tea towel racks off the shelf from the hardware, and these simply get placed side by side at about eye level along the piece of timber. And finally, to blend the screw heads with the black rails, a little texter does the trick. No one will ever know. So this sits flush against the wall. What I've done is actually checked out a little bit so it goes snugly over the skirting board. That way it's easily removable without any damage to the building. This is a pretty substantial piece of timber, so I'm ensuring that I'm drilling directly into the wall stud. I've added this hook. It's going to be very handy for a mirror by the door. Perfect for putting on your sunscreen. And for those beach towels, rolled up neatly, they just slide in between. So here is where I'm going to situate the luggage rack, right above the door. What I've done here is actually made up two brackets just from the off cuts, but you don't have to do that. You can actually just buy these off the shelf. And to make it strong, I'm just screwing in from underneath. And using the same idea as the towel rack, I've used a piece of recycled timber, added some hooks, which is ideal for hanging the dining room chairs when you want to free up some floor space. Whether you're at home or in a holiday house like this, if friends drop by and want to stay overnight, it's always nice to be prepared. It's an ottoman by day, you can make it into a day bed or a sofa, and by night it unfolds to become a single bed. Add another one, you have a double. Add more, you've got room for everyone. So much fun. It's pretty hard to go past a crackling campfire, but here in Australia in summer, it's not always possible to light one. So I'm taking inspiration from the great outdoors. I'm going to build my own, one we can use inside the cabin and out. <laughs> Using some of the sticks that I foraged earlier, my campfire is pretty simple. All I need to do is just cut these on the flat and then I can just nail gun them around my stump. I don't understand why you want to wait. I just want to lie until the next day. Keep it simple, then it's easy. Stay on your side, just won't believe me. Saturday morning. I love this, it's a great piece of natural sculpture. And for the fire glow inside, a battery operated camp light, of course, just pops down within. <laughs> Almost like the real thing. Well, that's just a starting point for the rest of the cabin. If you're rubbish at fishing like I am, you might like to use your crab pot as a light shade instead. As well as the versatile ottomans, we've also put a lot of thought into the dining furniture. Now, the chair I'm sitting on, they're the ones that can hang in the hallway for storage. And this table, well, it can be used inside or outside. And as you can see here, it has this swing leg, which allows it to fold up and down when you don't need it to. How fun is this little shack? I absolutely love it. So many great ideas that you could chip away at every time you come to visit. But if you're not lucky enough to have a cabin like this, I'm sure you'll agree there are plenty of ideas here that you can take home to make every day feel like a holiday.